In the next few videos, we're going to rebuild this plugin, this gizmo, Manipulator, you can use inside the canvas in Godot. Henrika made an intro video to plugin creation, and you can find that in the description. So go check it out for the very basics. This one is already a slightly more complicated plugin to help you go further and learn to interact with the 2D canvas. In order to follow along, you'll need to go to the RPG, Open RPG project. You can download it as a zip file and open it in Godot 3.1. Now we are working with Alpha 3 and we're going to upgrade it to 3.1 Beta and Godot 3.1. Now, as you can see, you have the final plugin already available in the project. So it's in the add-ons folder, RectExtents, Gizmo plugin, and you have a plugin.gd file. You also have a plugin config file that's there for you uh, as it's fairly simple to create and we've seen that in a previous video. We're going to just work from that. So select all the codes in the plugin and delete it so that we can start with a clean slate. And I'm going to close the other tabs. Also, there's a special object called rect extents in the project and we're going to work from that one. So it's just a rectangle. It's an empty rectangle that we use to define the touch area on an animated character so that it works even when the character is animated and the body parts are split. This is a simple way to define the extent of a character. So let's create a new scene. It's a 2D scene and the root node we're going to change it to rect extents which is registered in the node types in Godot 3.1. All right, and with that, you should see the plugin that has not been reloaded just yet, should still work. So we should be able to modify the size of the node. And with that, we can get started. So let us go to plugin.gd. We're going to save it. So first we have to save the scene, obviously. So I'll call it rect extents. And it will save the plugin as well, which should be reloaded. So now it should not draw the four handles anymore, as there's no code for that. In this first video, we're going to focus on the drawing. So we're going to take that rectangle that we have, and we're going to draw four anchors. There's quite a bit of code to do that already. In the next video, we'll focus on the calculations to resize the rect extents and then work on the input part. All right, let's get started. So back to the script editor, I'm going to close the game script. And first, we use the tool keywords at the start of the script so that it can run in the editor. All the code that we will write will run continuously in the editor like normal game code. Then we extend editor plugin, the base class for all plugins in Godot. Control click on that to open the documentation. I'm also going to expand script editor and we are going to add a few methods. Notice that you have quite a few methods with the keyword virtual next to them. Virtual methods are methods that are here to be overridden by your plugin that bring some special functionality. So we're going to start with the edit one. This is a function that you use to create a special editor, a tool that edits a special type of nodes. All right. And in our case, our tool is here to edit a rect extents node. So let's create the edit function. You'll see that Godot auto completes it. And we're just going to get the edited object and store it in a global variable so we can access it in the rest of our code. So let's create a rect extents variable and I'll set it to the rect extents type. This way, we will only get rect extent type nodes from our edit function. So let's set rect extents to the object that the editor gives us. In order to draw on the canvas, we need to use another method. So let's go back to editor plugin documentation and we want to forward some drawing over the viewport in the canvas. So that's for the 2D workspace here. And Godot will give us a control node, so a regular UI node called overlay that we can use to draw anything on the viewport. Let's click on that. You have some documentation and the doc string tells us that we need to override the handles virtual method to activate this one. So we're going to look for handles next and handles is going to give us an object and we can return true or false as this is a Boolean method to tell Godot whether or not it should draw something on the screen. 
So we can check that the object that we have is of type rect extends. If that is the case, Godot will draw some stuff on the screen. Otherwise, it will clear the drawing. So let's add this handles method. And we're going to return that the object is of the type rect extends. So from there, we can add forward canvas draw over viewport, the first one. And for now, we're going to return. This is the method in which we will draw and we will use that overlay node to draw. The first thing we want to do here is a quick check. We might have an edited rect extents object stored, but by default, it's going to be null. And we want to make sure that this object exists and that if it was the last edited object and for some reason it gets freed by another script or something, we don't try to draw anything because otherwise we would get a bug. So we're going to add a quick check. We could check that um, there's no rect extent node. So if the value is null or if rect extent is not inside the tree, we're going to return from the function. We don't draw anything. And from there, we can start doing our drawing calculation. So we have a rectangle and it has four corners and we want to draw handles on each of these corners. We're going to add a num at the start of the script. So let's call it uh, in um, anchors, for example. And we're going to add four of them, top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. All right, so with that, we can use uh, these types from the enum to just store a list of four anchors in a dictionary to make it easier to find them again later as we draw, but also interact with the handles because we're going to need in that part of the code, in that function, we not only are going to draw the anchors, but because we're going to calculate them, we're also going to store some bounding rectangle to later work with interactions to later recognize whether the user clicked inside the anchor or not. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the four anchors positions as if we were making them for the game. Now, drawing in the viewport is a little more complicated than drawing in a game because you have the ability to zoom, pan at different zoom levels. Then we need to take these positions and transform them to get the viewport to draw them at the right position on the canvas. But first, let's create these positions. So we're going to start from the rect extents position and size. Let's start with the position. It's going to be rect extents dot position. And we're going to store uh, rect extent has an offset. So we're going to store rect extents dot offset. And there, because we're going to reuse the values on all four anchors, this will make for shorter lines of code. Then we're going to calculate the half size of our rect extent. So it's going to be a vector to value. And we're going to use rect extents dot size divided by two. And from there, we can create the anchors uh, positions. So it's going to be a dictionary and we can add a colon before the equal sign to make sure that Godot uses the dictionary type for this value. Now for the keys, we're going to use our enum. So top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and do the calculation for each of them. So. For the top left corner, the calculation is position minus half the size of our rect extent plus the offset value. And for the top right, it's going to be position plus. So we have to calculate a vector value here. So it's going to be half size dot X. So we want to add half the size of the rectangle on the X position, but minus one times half size dot y so we move back up to the top right and we add our offset to that now bottom left is going to be similar but the calculation is reversed for bottom left we're going to have minus one times half size dot x so we offset the position to the left and then we add the half size dot y and finally, for the bottom anchor, it's similar to the top left one, except instead of subtracting the half size, we're going to add it. And there you go. This way we have the position of the four anchors in game space. 
Next up, we want to calculate the anchors data, like their bounding rectangle, and we want to store them so we can use them in other functions in the plugin. So we're going to add a new variable at the top under rect extents, and we're going to call it anchors. We have four anchors, so we're going to <coughs> store them in an array. And every time we need to redraw them, we're going to recalculate them because when you interact with the handles, they're going to have, like you're going to change the size of the rect extents, so the anchors will need to change position and be redrawn constantly. So make sure that on every tick, we're going to empty the anchors. And we can even move that before we calculate the position of the anchors. So we're going to loop over the four anchor positions that we calculated right above and then we're going to use some transform matrices and calculations to get the right position and size for our anchors on the canvas. But first let's calculate the anchors sizes so they're all going to be the same size. It's going to be a vector 2 here. We're going to like so. So uh, we're going to have some fixed radius, let's say 8 pixels times 2.0. So we're going to add a, a variable for that. Let's add a new constant um, circle radius like that. And it's going to be float, set it to 8 pixels. Then I can replace it inside the calculations here. So circle radius you can also remove the redundant uh, vector 2 at the start. So it's going to be that on both axes, circle radius times 2. From there we can calculate the center and rectangle, the bounding rectangle for each of our anchors. For that we're going to use a for loop. We're going to take each coordinate in our anchors positions values list. So if you call values on the dictionary you get an array of the four values that you have here. And we're going to calculate two things. First, we want to calculate the anchor's center on the canvas. So anchor center, it's going to be a vector two here again. And here we need to use two transform matrices to multiplication with matrices to transform our coordinates in game space to the actual viewport, the 2D canvas, something that takes into account the zoom level as well. In order to get the coordinates on the canvas, we need to multiply our chord value by the viewport transform of our rect extents and by the canvas transform, the transform that's linked to the canvas. For that, we can get them from our rect extents node. Dot get viewport transform multiplied by rect extents again. Dot get canvas transform times our coordinate value. This will give us the anchor center on the screen, the, the one that we want to draw. And from there we can create anchors. So each of the anchors we're going to have them as dictionaries. And in this dictionary we're going to store the anchor's position we're going to store its bounding rectangle. So the position is going to be the anchor's center. The rectangle is going to be a rectangle to value. We're going to take the anchor center and subtract the anchor size divided by 2. And for the size of our rectangle, we're going to use our anchor size value. From there, we're going to append this new anchor to our anchors array that we created before so that we can access it in other functions. So we append our new anchor. And finally, we're going to draw this anchor, which we can do in line here or we can do in a second loop. Let's do that. So once we have appended all the anchors, we can say for anchor in anchors, we're going to have our just the drawing code here. Let me recenter it on the screen. And so we're going to use the overlay that's passed by the function. So let me go back up. Remember that we get that control node that allows us to draw over the viewport. And so we're going to use that to draw two circles. The first one is going to be a bit large. So we're going to use the anchors position. So anchor being a dictionary, we access the position key. 
And for the size, we're going to use circle radius again, plus we're going to add some stroke radius. So let's create a new variable, stroke radius, and it's going to be float as well, and maybe um, two pixels. So we draw a circle that's going to be pretty large, and we're going to use a color. Let's create a variable as well for that. So color, and in order to pick the color, let's go back to the viewport here. We're going to add a node that lets us select a color or maybe go, yeah, just select the rect extent. You can select a color here. We can either, we can reuse the color from uh, the rectangle, the one that they'll be drawn on the rectangle. So let's go back to the script. I'm going to store the hex key here, adding dash symbol at the start and be sure to rename the variable as stroke color. Now we can use it as the last argument for draw circle. You can duplicate the line with control B to draw a second circle that will be a little smaller this time. So you remove the addition of the stroke radius. And instead of using the stroke color, we're going to use the circle color here and we can make it white. So three F's in order to get a pure white color. Now I'm going to copy these values, group them with the circle radius here. So I'll have the two radiuses at the top and the two colors below these. Now let's grab all these four values, go back to the top of the script, just do a bit of cleanup here. And instead of having them as mutable variables, we can rename them as constant. So select the first var keyword, type constant in the replace field, uh, control R to replace, hit tab to go to replace button and tap four times, enter, 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 so that we have four constants now. At this point, if you followed along, I made one mistake at the start of the script. I forgot the negation on the condition to draw on the viewport. Make sure that you double check that if rect extends is empty, if it's set to null, you return from the function. And if it's not inside the tree, you also want to return from the function. But with that, you can go back to the scene, deselect your node and reselect it, and you should see the four handles draw on the canvas. So that is it.